what was so sort of special about what George created with Star Wars was that it was this universe that felt really authentic and sort of lived in and layered and um, you believed it. The movies are so rich and so full of detail and you know that there's a ton of things that aren't revealed in the movies but that obviously exist in the, the lore of Star Wars, in, in the story of, of Star Wars. And the EU has been our attempt to take you into areas that aren't explored in the movies and give you much more depth. I still have my very first Star Wars comic book, which happens to be the very first Star Wars comic book. My first exposure to the EU was probably one of the Brian Daly books. I think it was Han Solo and the Lost Legacy. It was the one with the glowing crystal skull thing on the cover. The first EU story that I ever read was Splinter of the Mind's Eye. Near the end, there's this great scene where Princess Leia confronts Darth Vader with a lightsaber, and so that just blew my mind. My favorite, hands down, is Han Solo at Star's End. It was published in 1979, written by Brian Daly. He's my favorite Star Wars author. At the time, there's no video games, there's no internet, there's none of that. It's basically comics, novels, and waiting until the next movie comes out. I got Heir to the Empire the day that it came out, and of course it's got the little band across, a uh, special introductory price. That's the one that started it all. I remember going to the bookstore and seeing it, uh, and being like, what is that? There was this Jedi with, you know, rays coming out of his fingers. We had to drive two hours to go to the nearest bookstore. So we, we went there the day it came out and uh, bought it right away. I had to wait my turn to read it. Um, we got all the books after that. George set up a huge canvas for us to work on. He had, with the movies, we had everybody from royalty, princesses, emperors, all the way down to the scum of the earth. We had planets, we had systems, lots of aliens, uh, ways of getting back and forth. The authors and comic writers and gamers just went to town with it. I always loved a Dark Empire comic book series. There were some great illustrations in it. Just very inspiring stuff for me when I was in junior high and high school. My favorite story is Shadows of the Empire. I liked the idea of creating some connective tissue between Episode 5 and Return of the Jedi, and it was great because we got to use all of the great Star Wars characters. Darth Vader could be in it, and the Emperor. My favorite one by far is uh, Courtship of Princess Leia. That was the first book where they introduced uh, Davimir, the planet, and the Night Sisters. And I was really excited about this concept that there's a whole planet of force-sensitive females that ride rancors around during the day. One of the key books for me that really introduced me to the idea of what the expanded universe could be was this one published in 1987, the Star Wars source book. And it was essentially a 144-page guide to everything you needed to know about Star Wars so you could start telling your own stories set in the galaxy. And it was just mind-blowing. You know, the idea that I could finally find out how an X-Wing fighter works or what these alien creatures in the background of the cantina are like. A whole lot of people got introduced to my work because they played the Knights of the Old Republic video game. Uh, and of course, I was writing Knights of the Old Republic comics. By creating a cohesive whole uh, that everything belongs to, it uh, gives a lot of different points of entry for fans to come in, as Obi-Wan puts it, to take their first step into a larger world. I was a, a senior concept artist for Force Unleashed 2, so we got to pour a lot of ourselves into creating these things that were new to the Star Wars universe. As like a lifelong Star Wars fan, that definitely means the most to me. With Star Wars, we want the world to be real, and it feels real if everything is in line. And I think that that's the challenge for all of us going forward with Star Wars. How are we responsible with what was and how do we, you know, still move forward even if things become very different? We now have a story department so that there truly can be one consistent narrative and that's always been the dream. I think the idea of aligning the content is actually a a really fantastic and exciting opportunity that no other fictional universe could really even support. 
we're going to be able to bring fans a, a unified vision in a way that we've never done before. And I think that it's also a sacred trust to be invited to be a part of telling stories inside this universe because it's so, it's so precious to people. And I understand that because it's, it's precious to me. And the EU is born out of a love for Star Wars. That's what it really is. Carrying on the legacy before it really could do so on its own, like, like it will now through episode seven, eight, and nine, and all the other films coming out. So there's a bright future for Star Wars, but I think the EU will be a legacy that's mined forever, and that as more people come into it, they've no doubt been, been touched by it and inspired by it. I can't get enough of Star Wars. It never got old just kind of soaking up everything I possibly can about Star Wars and the universe. They, there can never be enough of that. Hi, my name is Vanessa Marshall. I play Hera on Star Wars Rebels. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh. Oh, oh.